إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد أيها الناس فإن أصدق الكلام كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O you who have attained faith be conscious of Allah have reverence in your hearts for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that is worthy of who he is of his essence and therefore of his attributes and names and therefore of his beauty and majesty and also on account of the numerous uncountable favors and bounties that he incessantly continues to bestow upon his creation. Allahumma ja'alna min ash-shakirin. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, the reminder of today is again to remind myself and you of the grand purpose for which we were created. The ultimate grand purpose for which we were brought into existence from nothingness by God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the fulfillment of ubudiyya to Him. The fulfillment of ubudiyya to Him. The right of His rububiyya, of His Lordship subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us is our ubudiyya. The right that he is and that he created and that he bestowed and that he sustains and that he provides and that he rules and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala judges. The right of that is that we love him. We worship him. We fulfill our responsibility to him through the stewardship and the vicegerency for which he created us, that khilafa on earth. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for us and wants for us in this created existence in which we are, he wills for us that we be happy, that we attain happiness in this world and most importantly and ultimately in the here after. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need of any of his creation. Is in no need of any of the ibadah and the ubudiya of his creation. That ubudiya is intended for us to attain happiness. Noble happiness in this world and in the hereafter. To the extent that the scholars of the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, Sayyidina wa Mawlana, they all agree on one, statement, on one statement that the objective of all the laws that God, that Allah azza wa jal legislates for us is تحقيق مصالح العباد في المعاش والمعاد is the fulfillment of the well-being of the servants of the divine or the creation in this life and in the hereafter. Allah Azza wa created us 
and will for us that we attain happiness through ubudiya, through achieving certain objectives, rawhani maqasid and akhlaqi maqasid, spiritual objectives and moral objectives, the fulfillment of which will lead us to ubudiya, which will lead us to happiness in this dunya and in akhirah. And in that context and in that reality, He subhanahu wa ta'ala also revealed to us and expressed to us ways and resources, if you will, and laws and standards that help achieve those objectives. Laws and regulations that govern our lives without which it would be chaotic and disorderly, and we would not be able to pursue that noble happiness and to attain it. And those laws and those regulations are all, in general, intended also to preserve and promote that which is the means to that happiness, to preserve and promote the deen, our faith religion. And therefore all the accessories and the means and the ways legitimate and moral in order to preserve and promote that. A human being without faith, without iman, without tawheed is in loss, is in chaos. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that we preserve the essence of our humanity. And a human being who is disconnected from the concept of the Creator, from the relationship with the Creator, and who denies that, is indeed in utter loss. And the consequence of that is misery in this life and in the hereafter. The preservation and promotion of the deen of the faith and the preservation and the promotion of life. Life. Allah wills for us to live and to live honorably. And if there is no life preserved and promoted, there is no deen preserved and promoted. If there are no recipients and holders and carriers of the deen, in reality there is no deen. If there is no creation, if all human beings are killed and are dead, then what is the deen to be preserved and promoted? And therefore this deen and the way of Rasuluna wa Mawlana sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is to preserve and promote life. To preserve and promote deen. To attain happiness in this dunya and in akhirah and to preserve and promote reason al-aql human reason the ability to restrain oneself the ability to control oneself against the drives that are injurious and destructive to us and around us. Al-aql, which we translate sometimes as reason. Al-aql in the Arabic language has the meaning of to restrain, to hold back, to control. A person may have a, perhaps a high IQ in solving engineering problems, but a very low aql Q unable to restrain himself or herself against the drives and the actions and the comportments that are self-destructive or destructive to others. To promote aql, the accessories that preserve and promote reason, al-aql. And to preserve and promote al-irb, one's honor and dignity as a human being, one's lineage, one's ability and capacity to procreate, to continue, to preserve family, 
and life of the family and the well-being of the family and the honor of the family, the irb to be preserved and promoted. And yes, also property, wealth, and al-mal. For human beings, Allah created them, and they, He created them, and they need resources, and they use resources which they either own or borrow. The shara, the deen, means to preserve and promote property and wealth. And all of these are part of an essential order and uh, principles in our deen. Our ulama have said to the extent that مَا مِنْ مَسْأَلَةٍ خَرَجَتْ عَنِ الْعَدْلِ إِلَى الْجَوْرِ أو عَنِ الْمَصْلَحَةِ إِلَى الْمَفْسَدَةِ أو عن الرحمة إلى ضدها أو عن الحكمة إلى العبث فليست من الشريعة وإن أدخلت فيها بالتأويل Every matter in this world and in our lives of all the concerns of our lives if in trying to deal with it in an Islamic way in a Sharia ah way any issue and the result would be the following to move from justice to injustice from balance to imbalance from equity to inequity from mizan to the lack of mizan adl or to move from maslaha something purposeful, something that achieves an interest in accordance to the preservation of life and faith and so on. Maslaha, something of benefit that is achieved pertaining to faith or life or reason or irb, honor or wealth. If there is no such a thing, if we move from maslaha and orderliness and well-being to disorderliness and the absence of maslaha and therefore mafsada or if we try as we solve issues or we live move from rahma from compassion from merciful love from loving mercy from kindness if we move from that to a solution that is harshness and ruthlessness and mercilessness. Or if we move from wisdom to abath, to purposelessness, from purposefulness to purposelessness, from wisdom, hikmah, to abath, to childishness, to stupidity lack of intelligence if we move from that to that then all of this indicates that all of those have nothing to do they say the ulama have nothing to do with sharia those solutions if they violate these principles these constants they have nothing to do with sharia if we move from justice to injustice from orderliness to disorderliness for example from merciful love to mercilessness, from wisdom to vain approach, useless and stupid and purposeless, then that has nothing to do with Sharia and with Islam, even if we were to force it through interpretive scholarly attempts. What's the result? These are to be preserved and promoted. No matter what you do at home, at school, in the masjid, at work, socially, administratively, business-wise, 
politically, if these are violated, then do not claim that to be an Islamic solution. In general. And therefore, in order to preserve what we need to preserve, we need to follow the course that leads to that preservation. Any means, lawful, moral, not prohibited in the shara, nor in the law, any means not prohibited, that contributes to preserving and or promoting those constants and those values that that means is to be used. Whether as an obligatory means, if the end is obligatory, or as a mustahab recommended means, if the objective is mustahab, or is simply is lawful, if the objective is is unlawful, as long as we said, as long as there is no text that prohibits that. لِذَلِكَ قَالُوا مَا لَا يَتِمُّ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فهو واجب ما لا يتم الواجب إلا به فهو واجب as a rule and an axiom of law in Sharia that which is necessary to an end that is necessary becomes necessary as long as there is no text that prohibits that and similarly if the objective is مستحب and this means will lead to that mustahab, then that means becomes mustahab, recommended. If also there is an end that is prohibited, and this means will lead to that prohibited end, then that means is prohibited. If the end is makruh, is reprehensible, makruh, not haram, and the means that will lead to it is there, then that means is makruh as well. Wahakala. Now, having said that, we need happiness and we pursue happiness. We need freedom to achieve happiness. Freedom is a means to happiness. Freedom does not, have, does not have a value in itself, as some say, that's wrong. Freedom is as valuable as a means to the happiness we pursue. So there are those who pursue a happiness that is predatory. So, they desire freedom that is predatory. There are those who pursue happiness that is angelic. So they desire freedom that is angelic. There are those who pursue happiness that is cattle-like. Eating and drinking and sleeping and playing and copulating. Essentially. They desire a freedom that is consistent with that happiness, yes. But those who desire happiness noble and honorable and divine, and that continues after death, would desire a freedom that helps them achieve that happiness. And human beings aspire with their own ijtihadat, sometimes they hit it right, sometimes they hit it wrong. Human beings attempt, often, to pass laws and to legislate those who have the freedom to do so in order to the best of their analyses, some of them at least, to maximize the means to happiness as they understand it. We live in this country, the United States, this country that is ours, as many of you 
are citizens of this country and many desire to be citizens of this country. With all its opportunities and with all its challenges. With all its opportunities and with all its challenges. And you desire to be free. And you desire to be happy. And you desire to preserve and promote the values of deen, of life, of reason, of erb, honor, and of property. You desire that. And therefore, there are means to that. Of the means is a lot of dua. Essential means is a lot of supplication, a lot of dua, a lot of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, a lot of self, self-discipline and struggle within to achieve that. That we speak of very often and I hope we continue to learn together. But as a means also towards that which is worldly and immediate is to make yourself known to your society, to your neighbors, to your community. To participate in the life of those who live in this country, as citizens of this country. And yes, alhamdulillah, Muslims do participate in so many ways. We have scientists, we have engineers, we have doctors, we have, uh, mashallah, teachers, professors, researchers, we have pharmacists, we have lawyers, we have judges, we have blue-collar workers. Yes, we, have, we do participate to the economy of this country, to the well-being of this country, with the intent inside of you as a Muslim to will good for this country. And a means to preserve that. مَا لَا يَتِمُّ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ Is yes, your constitutional right to vote. To make yourself known. Because the fact is, and part of shara is to look at the facts. And to study the facts. And to see how the facts affect the problem and the solution to the problem. إِنزَالُ الْأَحْكَامِ عَلَى الْوَاقِعِ As it is expre- expressed in the words of the ulama. The projection of the laws and the values of the shara onto the reality in which we live. To come with judgments and fatawi. And the reality is that if you do not do that locally and nationally, at all levels, with time, you are not known. And you are not considered for your even constitutional rights. That the constitution guarantees for you. If you do not participate, if you do not express yourself, walhamdulillah, within the envelope that we mentioned moments ago, the spiritual envelope, the moral envelope, the rahmah, the maslaha, the hikmah, the dua, within all of that, and you express yourself, and you vote. The fact is, that is a means, an important means to be known, and to produce desired positive change, without which, most likely, that will not happen. Our deen is spiritual, is moral, and is real, realistic. And the beauty of it is, yes, in the reality of the world, you make that reality also spiritual and moral. It's not either or. You make reality. You make the world as you live it, those who can do that. You make it 
spiritual and moral. You live it spiritually and morally despite the challenges. And you live the moral life. Whether you're a businessman or a imam or a scientist or a politician. You live morally. You express yourself morally and ethically and spiritually. And you are given the freedom to do so. أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه طوبى للمستغفرين. Please seek the forgiveness of Allah عز وجل. What an excellent abode awaits those who sincerely seek forgiveness from Allah عز وجل. الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله على عباده الذين اصطفى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق معلن الحق بالحق ناصر الحق بالحق الهادي إلى صراط الله المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلاة طيبة مباركة زاكية نامية دائمة بدوامك لا تنقطع أبدا ولا تفنى صرمدا ولا تنحصر عددا ولا تنقص مددا صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والآفات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات أفرادا وجماعات إنك لطيف لما تشاء صلاة هي عندك أشرف الصلاة وأطيبها وأكرمها وأزكاها يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم ارزق أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم أسعدنا بك في الدنيا والآخرة Ya Allah, grant us happiness with you in this world and in the hereafter. Ibadullah, inna Allah ya'amuru bil'adli wal-ihsan wa-ita'i bil-qurba wa yanha an al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon uzhkurullaha yadhkurkum qumu ila salatikum.